Hello, friends. This is Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Massa. In this video segment, I want to discuss what we see right here. New study projects ocean warming impact on Antarctic krill. And this is uh, at the University of Tasmania. And we've got a nice little photo of this, somewhere in the Southern Ocean with some very nasty uh, weather on the horizon. Typical for that region. Ocean warming is likely to alter the distribution and life cycle of ecologically and commercially important Antarctic krill over the rest of the century, according to new IMAS-led research. Published in the journal Natural Climate Change, uh, excuse me, Nature Climate Change, the study looked at how kill growth habitat is likely to be affected by changes to ocean temperatures and the concentration of the species' preferred food, phytoplankton. The research team found that there would be a moderate impact across 85% of the Southern Ocean, with krill expected to move further south, that's uh, closer to Antarctica, and shifts in the time of year when conditions are most favorable. The research was led by IMAS PhD student Devi Vitia, uh, and included scientists from the Australian Antarctic Division, ACE, CRC, and the British Antarctic Survey. Uh, Ms. Vitia said the study's findings included a projected change in the seasonal distribution of krill habitat, particularly around northerly fishing grounds near the Antarctic Peninsula. The Antarctic Peninsula is that bit of Antarctica that juts out into the Southern Ocean. Understanding how krill will respond to climate change and the ecological impacts of those changes is important to both conservation efforts and management of the fisheries, the largest in the Southern Ocean. Keep in mind, the Southern Ocean is of the open ocean, most productive open ocean region on the planet. Most of the, you know, the middle of the ocean, like the middle of the Atlantic, middle of the Pacific, south and north, middle of the Indian Ocean are biological deserts, but not the Southern Ocean. Now, there is one critique I have of the study, which I'll get to later on. Our study combined projections of sea surface temperatures and phytoplankton using climate change scenarios with an established krill growth model. We found that over the coming decades, krill habitat quality can be expected to improve in spring particularly further south and on the continental shelf. Let's pause there for a moment. When they say moving further south, that's closer to Antarctica, hence the continental shelf. But that's because the oceans are warming. So you might have a little cooler temperature there so you might be able to set up a stratification where the, that is favorable for phytoplankton productivity. But also at the continental shelf, you might have upwelling processes that can bring nutrients up from below that the phytoplankton need. Now, I'll get to my critique right now. I feel it's as good a time as any. One of the reasons why the Southern Ocean is so productive is in an area called the Antarctic Divergence Zone. It's called the Antarctic Divergence Zone because there is an upwelling that occurs right there. This upwelling is part of the conveyor belt. And that upwelling brings nutrients. The phytoplanktons utilize the nutrients. They increase the productivity. And then you have zo uh, zooplankton feed on the phytoplanktons, krill feed on the phytoplankton, etc. So you get your whole uh, food web and uh, ultimately ending up with the baleen whales munching down the, the krill. So it tells you the extent of the productivity that you can support a large number of baleen whales. But what they didn't talk about is the fact that the deep water formation is slowing down in the Gin Sea. And of course, if it's slowing down, you know, the vertical slowing, uh, the vertical movement is slowing down. It doesn't pull the Gulf Stream with it, so the Gulf Stream is also slowing down. 
Not only is the conveyor belt the heat distribution mechanism for the planet, but as it, if it's slowing down, it doesn't start does not start flowing south or slows down in its flow south, that upwelling rate will decrease or if not stop. And if you don't have those nutrients coming up, that whole ecosystem can collapse because you don't have the nutrients to, to help the phytoplankton do their thing and you know form the basis of the entire food web. So I, I want to mention that. Keep that in mind as we examine this uh, report here. In summer, there was little net change, but good habitat redistributed, increasing at high and low latitudes and declining in mid latitudes. So in other words, what they're saying here is areas that are typically favorable are no longer favorable and have moved around. That's what they're saying. Autumn saw the greatest decline in habitat quality and area, mainly in sub-Antarctic regions. Now keep in mind, autumn in the southern hemisphere is when the northern hemisphere folks have their spring. So we're basically talking, you know, the uh, the March, April, uh, May time period, if you will. In response, we expect krill habitat to move south into higher latitudes, closer to Antarctica. At the same time, there will be a change in the time of year when krill habitat is optimal, improving in spring, but declining in important regions during summer and autumn. Now, th that's a key statement, as we're going to see in a little, in a little bit. Ms. Vitia said the shift in seasonal habitat quality, especially around the Antarctic Peninsula, could disturb the synchronization between krill and the annual cycle of this important ecosystem. Synchronization usually allows krill to capitalize on seasonally available food resources, allowing growth, reproduction, storing of reserves to make it through the winter. A temporal shift in habitat quality could create a timing mismatch, potentially affecting krill reproduction and population dynamics. In other words, if they miss the bloom, they will die. The commercial fishes, which is currently centered on the Antarctic Peninsula, leading the shifts in distribution and timing of the fishing effort. The geographical shift of krill habitat towards more southerly waters is also likely to have ecosystem impacts, particularly for land-based predators at sub-Antarctic islands that have limited capacity to follow their preferred food source. In other words, the changing oceanic dy dynamics could affect the ecosystem such that some, in some cases it may be prove favorable to krill, other cases it may not prove favorable to krill. But this whole issue of the synchronization is very important. And this is not just here, but anywhere on the planet. When birds, for example, migrate to the tundra here in the, in, in, uh, the tundra of North America, they're doing so with the understanding that when they lay their eggs and the, hitch, and the chicks hatch, that the bugs will be out in force and they can uh, you know, grab the bugs and feed the chicks. Well, the bugs uh, time their, you know, when they come, they time their emergence from the egg and larvae stage to when the flowers are blooming, for example. Well, the flowers start blooming earlier because things are warmer earlier, then the bugs, the insects will come out of the ground earlier and then some of them have short life cycles you know they live for uh, you know like mayflies for example you know they they come out of the ground they fly around a bit they may die <laughs> some of the mayfly adults don't even have mouth parts they're just flying reproduction things but they die now the birds show up late and they're going to say where are the bugs where are the insects i can't feed my chicks it's that kind of an example so everything is you know, synchronize closely and you start throwing wrenches into the works and the synchronization gets tweaked and it's off a bit, this can have uh, very serious implications. So that's, that's the concern being raised here. And this is a concern everywhere on the planet where things are so tightly timed to migration, to when things bloom, things emerge, 
you know, the, you know, the seasonality of everything. A warming planet is throwing all of these off, and it's happening at a very fast rate such that organisms cannot adapt quickly enough. And that will, can lead to uh, detrimental decreases in their uh, numbers. So uh, this will be interesting. You know, this is kind of like a, a you know, so this has been studied in uh, nature climate change, but this is one of these, uh, like a baseline study. So it'll be interesting to see when they go back and gather more data, how this works out along. Uh, and of course, with the data is uh, the emerging situation, the changing situation and the physics and so on of the region in question. So um, I guess is one of these things where stay tuned. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.